house this morning just give him praise this evening pardon me and just give him praise and give him glory we thank you lord you are good you are kind you are faithful your mercies are new to us every morning we give you glory and we give you praise we honor you we exalt you we worship you we proclaim you as our lord we proclaim you as our king you proclaim you as our maker there is none compared to you always like unto you in all the earth glorious in all your ways faithful in praises always doing wonders blessed be the name of the lord we give you thanks and we give you glory and we give you honor in jesus mighty name we pray at a church says aloud amen. amen all right put your hands together for yourself let's put our hands together also for the choir amen, amen. hallelujah amen. thank you jesus i was looking at the back and look, seeing this cross behind me okay media please <laughs> i was wondering if I'm in Golgotha or something. All right, please be seated. If you're physically present and if you're watching at home, welcome to church this evening. Um, I'd like you to put the link on your, on your stories, on your WhatsApp stories, um, your Insta stories, whatever it is. You can share with people around you, people that you know. You can forward the link to their page directly and just say, Oh, I know you would need this message. I know you would need this message. So, today we are talking about the voice of God. And I would bring a, a different message for us this, morning, this evening. So, today's message is going to be a continuation of Sunday service. All right, particularly if you attend the new um, Ikej, and I believe that was the same thing preached across all the new installation. All the new installation, you know, was fo focused on Love Doctor as the team for the service. And, um, you know, I believe that we started talking about the foundation of the love of God and also relationship, da, 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 da. So this, more, this evening, I'm going to be talking about the voice of God but I'm going to be talking about it as it relates to relationship. Um, one of the questions I am get to ask a lot of people ask me, since I became pastor and on social media, in fact, I think that on my Instagram, averagely one of the questions that I get to be asked almost every time is about relationship. I, I get to speak to different people, cancel people, talk to people, and it's usually relationship, 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 boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you know, and all of that. And it has become a very interesting subject that connects to every one of us. So this evening, we're going to talk about the voice of God where relationship is concerned. But you see, the interesting thing about this teaching is that you can apply it to any area of your life. You can apply it to your finances, you can apply it to your health, you can apply it to your academics, your business, your career, whatever it is that you are, you know, focused on or that you do. And um, it's going to be so good. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. By the power of the Holy Spirit this evening, we ask that your word would bring illumination I decree in the name of Jesus that everyone under the sound of my voice would hear a clear whisper in their heart to know exactly what you would have them do in this season of their life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. You know in the life of every person there are certain necessities in our lives. As a human being, there are certain things that is sort of like what we would call necessities. One of which is to eat. I mean, I mean, I'm, I believe that there are people, or I believe rather, there are not people who who would go one year without eating. 
Yes, even though you're fasting, I believe that even after the fast, you would break your fast. So food is a necessity for everybody. It's very important that you eat. It's very important that you sleep. All right? Those are necessities. All right? It's also very important that you drink water. Amen? Um, I think that now... No, I don't want to play yet. Let me enter into the call of the message very well. But you see, there are many necessities, right? Sleeping is one of it. Bathing is one of it. I, well, I hope bathing is still one of the necessities in this generation. Because there might be people who can go like five days and call it vibes, you know? All things are possible with this generation. But these things are necessities, right? And it means that there is or there, there's going to be adverse effect in the life of a man or a woman, whatever it is, if you do not do these things. I mean, can you imagine you go one year or one month or three months, apart from if you're fasting, or three months without eating? You're going to have some adverse effect to that. If you go six months without drinking water, you, you expect certain things to happen to you. The same way if you go six months without having your bath, you expect that people would walk away from you. All right? Or you go without using a perfume for, for at least, you know, people go without using perfume for 10, 10 years now. But at least just, eh, that word is word of wisdom for a guy you watching tonight. Eh? The reason why she's not giving you attention is that the, 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 the presence you are bringing is uh -huh, is uh, is not palatable <laughs> so these necessities are very important because they help you to live a good life they, they help you to enjoy life it's the same way there are certain necessities spiritually as well and one of those necessities which is very important as a new creation is to hear and understand the voice of God. The same way physically, if you do not participate in some of the necessities, it's going to have some, you're going to have, it's going to have some adverse effect in your life. It's the same way, studying the word, hearing the voice of God, would have adverse effect in your life if you do not pay attention to it. And that's why it's very important. This evening, I'm going to be focusing very majorly on how to hear the voice of God. See, one of the questions I've been asked the most, and since Sunday, my phone has been buzzing, I had to select the responses I want to give. Instagrams, you know, Twitter, uh, I said Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, people have been sending messages. Oh, P.S., that message, I have questions, don't worry. I know many people have questions, they want to ask me, they enjoy the message, da, 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 da. thank you so much. I would answer some of them today. And I, if I cannot answer them today, I would continue tomorrow, uh, pardon me, on Sunday or next week. Da, 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 da. We have the whole month together to, you know, learn and, and unlearn those things. But one of the questions I'm, I, I, I get to be asked most times is, how do I know that is the one for me or she's the one for me? Or another question is, how do I hear the voice of God say, Pastor, I've prayed, I've fasted, but... I didn't hear anything. I just, I just didn't hear anything. And the one that, you know, like the Genesis will say, bust my head or bust my brain. The most is when someone says that, um, I know that she's my wife. I mean, this person is about to get married to somebody else. And they are saying, I know, I know. God told me she's my wife. The, that marriage will not work because she's still going to marry me. So let's, understand how the voice of God works so that the voice of God is no longer monopolized by any sect. Alright? And it's very interesting that we all have a good understanding of this voice and how it works particularly where marriage and relationship is concerned. Glory be to God. Alright, open your Bible with me and let me start with that. Open your Bible with me to Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 3. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs 24 
and verse 3. This is a powerful scripture and we're going to read it in all translation possible. We're going to read it in the King James Version. We're going to read it in the um, New Living Translation. And we're going to read it in the Amplified Version. Alright, we're going to read verse 3 and verse 4. If you're watching online, welcome to church. You know, and you can throw jabs at people that are currently watching with you online. So if I begin to shake tables like I would right now as I get into this message, you can throw some holy jabs at each other. Alright, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 3 says that through wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established. Next verse, verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Now open again to the New Living Translation. Thank you. Let's read together if you're at home. Don't forget, remember what I said to you on, Sun, um, on Tuesday. Every time during midweek service, make sure you have your writing material with you. Make sure you are writing continuation, a continuation of what you, what you started to write on Sundays during your Sunday services. All right, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 3, the NLT version says, A house is built by wisdom and becomes strong through good sense. Allah, it sounds like common sense. Then verse 4 says, Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables. Now let's open to the Amplified Version. The Amplified Version says it this way. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding it is established on a sound and good foundation. Next verse. It then says, And by knowledge shall, it, shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Glory to God. Now, let's begin to break it down one after the other. Particularly where marriage and relationship is concerned. You know, one of the questions that I asked when I was on campus and I find myself being asked the same question is if God really told these two people to date why did they break up or if God really told these two marriages this person is you know filled with the Holy Spirit this other guy and the girl filled with the Holy Spirit they were probably leaders in the church or they were probably you know whatever it is very Jim Jim Christian like we say and the question we used to ask back then is why did they break up didn't God say so or in marriages as well why are they divorced why did they want to get a divorce didn't god tell them and so there are many people particularly atheists who would then say to you see it's not important to hear the voice of god look at that marriage and i mean we live in a generation where we actually have too many you know references right now too many people that you can point to celebrities you know famous people that you can actually point to and say oh but this person is a pastor or this person is a man of god or this person is very spiritual why then did the marriage fail or why then did the relationship didn't work this scripture would help us understand what all this dynamics about relationship really speaks about and that's why i'm going to begin to talk about and then I'm going to be talk about one after the other how to hear the voice of God not tell us specific only for marriage in every other area of your life but I want to tell you it where relationship is concerned today you know when I was on campus I'll share a, a, a little I won't go into the details but at some point I, I started getting worried and I think it also played a little role in my in my thought why I never really got into a relationship on campus and the reason is because in my mind, I just felt that, you know, there were some relationships that broke up, some relationships that worked fine, da 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 da. Looking also into the view of those who were in the city, you could literally see the same pattern as well. There were some good marriages, there were some who were having issues, da da da. So, why then do these things happen? Because the first thing I want to deal with this morning, this evening, is the concept 
where many people have thought that, oh, it's not really important to hear the voice of God when marriage is concerned. After all, there are people who literally heard the voice of God, who the old church agreed with them. They all heard the voice of God. And at the end of the day, the thing didn't still work. But if you look at what Solomon said in this scripture, a very wise man gave us insight as to why we have challenges where relationship is concerned. Now let's go back to the Amplified Version. Amplified Version. It says, through skillful and godly wisdom, a house is built. A family, a home, or a, a life built. Now, what is wisdom? Let's start with that. Wisdom is the spoken or the written word of God. That's wisdom. It means that whenever God speaks to you, he has spoken his wisdom to you. That is why when we pray in the spirit, we pray the mysteries, the hidden wisdom of God. So when you pray in the Holy Spirit, when you pray in tongues, you are praying the wisdom of God. So that when the word of God comes to your own spirit, it is the wisdom of God. Now what the scripture is saying right there is that it's the wisdom of God that builds the house. It's the wisdom of God that builds the family. It's the wisdom of God that builds the life. So it is important that when you pray and you want to know God's will for you concerning a relationship, concerning a marriage, concerning somebody you are liking or somebody you want to marry, the moment God says yes to it, then at that moment, that relationship is built. Now pause there for a minute. This is where we have the problem. Now, if you go to a house, maybe all these houses they are building everywhere in Bejuleki and all these places right now, and you enter into one of those houses and it's still in the Kaka state, you know the carcass, which means it's not completed yet, it is not it's just built, you can only see the foundation and remember, when you go to a construction site, it's the most horrible place sometimes you have to wear helmets, there's so many things going on, I mean, can, can, I mean, I, I mean can you really go to a construction site and somebody says come and pay 500 million for this place if you see when we are done building it when we are done it's going to be the best like Buja and Rab you won't want to do it because at that time what you are seeing doesn't meet what you you know what they are showing you in pictures at the time so a carcass is a framework of the building the carcass gives the framework of the building but for you to live inside that building the building must be completed that is why scripture says that through wisdom a house is built. So what that means is the moment God says the word concerning that relationship or God says go ahead and you know be a part or go on with that relationship. What has happened in that moment is that you have a building. You have a foundation but it's almost like a caca state. Knowing fully well that it's in that caca state every other thing would be filled in that caca state. The painting comes on the carcass. The, the flooring comes on the carcass. The interior decoration comes on the carcass. Now, if you go back to the next verse of scripture, it then says that by understanding, it is established. Now, stay with me, media. Don't go either. Go back to verse 3. It says, by understanding, it is established on a sound and good foundation. So, it means that not only is wisdom the voice of God required in your relationship, which means that God speaks to you and that's fine. It means that you need to have understanding about one another in order for the foundation to be built. This is really where the problem lies. It's not that God hasn't spoken. The problem sometimes is God has spoken, the building is set. But the, 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 the knowledge and the understanding is missing. And so what makes a home work, what makes a family work, what makes a relationship work is the combination of wisdom, understanding and knowledge. It's a combination of wisdom, understanding and knowledge. It is not only the wisdom of God, God has spoken and then because God has spoken it means that this relationship is going to work. No. When God speaks, what happens in that moment is that you then have the foundation. You then have the building. You then have, because it's upon that building, every other thing will be added there. Now the next verse of scripture then says in verse 4, it says that, And by knowledge shall its chambers 
of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches now let me explain what that means to you if you go to any hotel in nigeria i'm sure many of you have been to hotels in nigeria out of nigeria outside the country um, in paris london france anywhere you've been to in the world when you enter into that hotel and you see the very beautiful aesthetics of the hotel room you see the doors you see the bedroom you see the you know the every area is so so beautiful and sometimes we take pictures you know go to the balcony we see the ocean view so beautiful you see the tv screen so beautiful now all of those things that you see there you would not have said it was beautiful if those things were missing there the reason why those things were beautiful to you was because that thing was filled by all of those things that you saw there this is what the scripture is saying that it is knowledge about your partner knowledge on how to build relationship that would then make the relationship filled with all good things so it is the combination of wisdom understanding which gives foundation and knowledge that makes the whole house beautiful that is why you can never live in an uncompleted building you can't just go and be sleeping in an uncompleted building no you can have the building wisdom because the wisdom is God saying go ahead but it's the knowledge that will make the relationship work are you getting what I'm talking about this evening it is the wisdom that of, of God to say go ahead because the wisdom of God is the word of God is the voice of God and that's powerful because without the voice of God there is no building to be established remember I said to you that is the voice of God that establishes the building is the voice of God that creates the framework the carcass but it's knowledge that makes the old building now beautiful which means that you have a good perfect knowledge about each other and here's the thing about knowledge knowledge is not impacted upon knowledge is gotten wisdom can be spoken to into your heart but when it comes to knowledge knowledge must be gotten this is the disparities between relationship they have the wisdom of God because God has said go ahead with that relationship but they don't have the knowledge of what will make that relationship beautiful I'll give you a very good example my wife and I again because I would always use my wife and I I don't I've not married any other person you're right so I don't know any other story It's my wife and I again a good example is this my wife is very introverted left to her she can stay in the room she can she doesn't she's okay but for me right I'm not like that I love people around me I love to play and things like that now if my wife and I have challenges or maybe we are having issues you know like that most times I'm someone I mean me if you know me very well I don't vex quickly but when I vex for you I vex and I move on the moment I say it I've moved on in fact I think that especially people that I work with I, I don't know how to get angry long I, I, I mean it's never been my thing I just get angry and then for two days I'm still on the matter once I say it I've moved on I mean sometimes I even forget that I've said it I've moved on like next time I see you I'm already shaking you hey how far now it's just it just disappears off my mind but my wife is a little bit different because of her personality she internalizes things you know she, she, she thinks through things and so me once I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy about something I just say it and then boom I've moved on and then the next moment I'm back to the room as I've said it and I've moved on I'm back to the room and say hey babe if you see what happened to me when I went out and she's just looking at me because in her mind see uh -uh, don't let us have that conversation don't come and cover it but for me I've moved on but no 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 so she's just looking at me babe you need we need to talk about what you said earlier I said what did I say okay let's talk about it now okay I'm sorry no don't say you are sorry what are you sorry about so I say I'm sorry I'm me too sometimes I'll be wondering wait oh what are you even sorry about now <laughs> but you see what has made that work for us is because I have an understanding of her personality and who she is that is knowledge that cannot be impacted into you are you hear what I'm saying to you this is the problem because you see if you have wisdom and you don't have knowledge the relationship will still fail 
if you have knowledge and God hasn't spoken that the relationship should stand, you are only painting a building that will collapse. <laughs> that is why wisdom, understanding, knowledge must be combined together. Remember what that scripture says in the Amplified Version. It said it's through wisdom and knowledge that the house is built. A home, a life is built. This is very important. Very, very important. That is why if you look at the scripture, what is the first thing Solomon is saying for any home to be built? The first thing first is wisdom. What is wisdom? The voice of God. So wisdom is saying, Solomon is saying right here, that the first thing you need for any successful home, successful relationship, is what God has said first. Not knowledge. This is the problem sometimes. Many times we want to start from knowledge, understanding, and then wisdom. But you have to hear the goal from God before you jump ahead and go and do it. Because why would you be building on something that God hasn't said you should build upon? This is really the problem sometimes. Many people are building on something God hasn't said you should build. Remember what the Bible says. Except the Lord builds the house. <laughs> the labor in vain those that build though. Except the Lord builds the house. And it is wisdom. What is wisdom? The voice of God. It is wisdom that builds. And that is why it's very important that we wait on God to hear the clear go from God before we enter into relationships. So that, that the moment God speaks about that relation for us to do it, then the word go is there already. And that building is built. Even though it seems like in the caca state. But it's built. It's already erected in the foundations. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So, one of the things I always tell, you know, single people, and I'm going to talk about married people as well, is, let me tell you this. When you begin to like somebody, let me say this to you, because, I mean, as a single person, I'm not single, as I was now single, these are the things I knew. The moment you are starting to like somebody and you know, not the one you are lying to yourself. You know, many single people lie to themselves. I don't like him. I don't like him. But you are talking two hours. You don't like him. Let me tell you something. You see, the moment you give extra attention to somebody that you will naturally not give to other people, it's already a sign. You are already passing the message. You are either lying to yourself or you are lying to the person that you don't like. But it's a lie. You cannot want to not invest in something yet you are feeding the time of that thing. It's a lie. If you want to date somebody, stay there. It's not that one that you are window shopping. Today you are talking three hours with this person. Next tomorrow you are talking three hours to this person. Where are you investing your talking time? So the first thing you do, the moment you catch yourself that, wait, oh, I'm already thinking about this brother. I'm already thinking about this brother. Or I'm already thinking about this sister. This thinking is getting too much. The moment you start catching yourself, let me tell you the first thing you should do. The first thing you should do is to start praying about that thing. I'm telling you the honest truth. You see, this is what happens a lot of times where, and when I say pray, I'm not talking about you just saying, Lord, should I marry him or not? That's not what I'm saying because some people just jump the gun quickly. That's not what the first thing you should do. I'm going to give you practical steps on what you need to do when relationships are concerned. The moment you start feeling like, ah, there is a potential or a possibility I can like this person. That that moment begin to pray. Because see, I've seen scenarios. I mean, people have spoken to me before. I've spoken to um, um, young people who are about to get into a relationship. They were friends for two years. They didn't ask each other out, but they thought they were going to get married. But they didn't ask each other out. Now, in the second year, they went to pray. Now they are now realizing that God said they should not be friends, they should not be dating, they should just be friends. Now you have wasted both of you's lifetime. Two years just gone. It's after two years you are now remembering that you need to go and pray. When the person that was supposed to date one of you each has said, this person already has somebody else. So before you start entering into let's go and pray, first start the prayer. I'm telling you the honest truth. Just, you see, and it's not praying of, because let me tell you this. Sometimes it's not praying of God. Is he the one or is he not the one? Sometimes it's a simple prayer of consecration. Single people, that consecration prayer must not be far from your lips. Spirit of God, 
I'm beginning to like this brother. And you must say the truth because God knows. You can't be lying that, oh, I don't really like him yet. I don't really like him yet. You are deceiving yourself. Say the truth. I'm beginning to like this guy. I'm beginning to like this lady. Holy Spirit, I consecrate myself. I trust you as my partner that you will lead me into all truth. And so I pray in the spirit concerning every area of my life, particularly my relationship. And I decree in the name of just let it be alignment. Let my heart, if it is right for me, let it be a deeper connection. And let the Holy Spirit begin to review things to me where this relationship is concerned. In the name of Jesus. And just begin to pray. And just begin to pray. The moment you start to do that, you, you save yourself the stress of later finding out. <laughs> After, you know, three years of friendship, the whole church has known that you guys are going to marry. Only for you to be coming back and say, Pastor, we just found out that God said, you, you can't tell me God said, oh, you have to go and marry. <laughs> Which one is God said? After three years, glory to God. But if God said, please don't do it. In, in fact, let me say this to you. Oh, not yet, but I'll get there. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for someone right now under the sound of my voice. You are free from that entanglement. Please play the keys eye for me. That soul tie. That soul tie. That soul tie that has kept you committed to a relationship that you know ought not to be anymore. That soul tie that has made you not advance ahead to a new relationship even though that relationship is now past but you have held yourself back you are not willing to advance just because maybe sex was involved or maybe attractions were involved or maybe there were so many things you went through together or for some people it's the number of years you've spent together five years seven years eight years ten years and all of a sudden the relationship didn't end up in marriage and it has caused a soul tie for you and nobody even from afar as people come closer to you a boy or a girl come closer to you they can sense and they can smell from a far that there is there's something this person is connected to or someone and they don't just want to get involved with you and so they withdraw from you all the days of their life because they don't want to get into that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth this hour I decree and I declare that you are free in the name of Jesus for whom the sun set free is free truly indeed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ amen thank you Lord hallelujah thank you that's the freedom for someone there thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus all right now let's keep going and so when you understand the, the fact that it is important for you to hear the voice of God because the voice of God is the foundation where relationship is concerned, how then do we hear the voice of God? Like I said to you, I'm not in a hurry. I believe very much that this subject of hearing the voice of God is so crucial, so important that if any pastor is able to teach his congregation how to hear the voice of God, the counseling session in the churches will reduce and the people will be more empowered to do more exploits for God. More exploits for God. And so I'm not in a hurry. I'm going to take it one after the other. The first way God leads us, number one, the number one way God leads us is through his word. And I'm going to stay on that today and I'm going to teach on that. The number one way God leads us even where relationship is concerned, the number one way God leads us is through his, for his word. It's through his word. Open your Bible with me to the book of Psalms 119 verse 105. Psalm 119 and verse 105. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet 
and a light unto my path. The word of God is a light to your path. It means when you are going in the right path or in the wrong path, the word of God. And the word of God there doesn't only speak about the spoken word, but also the written word. The word of God is a light to your path. Now, where relationship is concerned, there are certain foundational principles that you don't need to pray about again. Because the word of God already tells you and gives you the answer where that subject is concerned. You see, I've seen many people who come to ask me very interesting questions. And they spend the next three days and one month fasting and praying, going for plenty of retreats, retreating, believing that God is going to change his mind on what he has said. Let me tell you something. God doesn't change his mind where the written word is concerned. It is yes and amen. The written word would never change. No, 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 no. The written word can never change. And so everything that is written in the Bible were written on the men who came under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. So there are certain things God had already designed for us as new creations, as believers, that we must understand. And where relationship is concerned, it is a prerequisite in selecting and choosing who you ought to marry. I've seen people who've come to me to say, um, Sir, I want to marry this person, or I want to date this person, but he literally doesn't believe that God exists or Jesus is Lord. But I know that God told me to marry him. Now, you see people like that praying and believing that God can change the hearts of those people. And they'll say, oh God, God has told me. And I, you see, you know the biggest problem in church and in the body of Christ? The biggest problem is the moment you say to a pastor or to somebody or people who are counseling you, God said, the case has closed. Because people now use God said as an emotional appeal to have their way. God said, God told me, God told me. Ah, okay, if God told you, then go ahead. Because you see, I, I find that many people, when it comes to counseling, that bait of God said is what they quickly throw out. And you see, we cannot summon God to the earth to say, oh yeah, come now. Is it true you truly said? No. And so you have to allow people to do what they say that God said, and eventually we see if God said it or not. But there are things in his word that are already basic, they are foundation. You ought not need to pray about it again. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It is very clear. Who is an unbeliever? It's someone who doesn't believe that Jesus came to die and resurrected. Full stop. And scripture says, do not be unequally yoked with them. Can two walk together except they agree? Can two walk together except they agree? So there are certain things you should not even be thinking about and let me tell you why many people have this pressure. PD, you know, I realize when, when I speak to a lot of people trying to get married or get into a relationship, one of the things that comes to my mind a lot is that people truly, the devil, ah, this is so powerful and I want you to hear this. The devil has really sold something to people that they actually don't have options. It's a lie from the pit of hell that you don't have options. Ah, if I don't marry this girl, she's, she's the only thing I've seen that fits my purpose. Now, if this girl travels to Kuala Lumpur and you lose communication, would your life continue? It won't continue. And so the devil lies to people. This is why some people are in abusive relationships where the guy is beating them, the girl is, I mean, because now it's not only a guy that is beating man. There are women, <laughs> There are women flogging, not just beating, flogging. The guy is even stool, is doing stool down. Flogging. Now, what happens in that situation? Many people hold back and say, oh, I, 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 I can't just marry any other person. I will never forget while I was on campus in my part one or part two. That story stuck my mind. I was fin we just finished. Um, I went to class. It was exam period and I went to read. I was going to Anglo Mall's that night. And in the middle of the night, this was, I remember, 12 a, 2, 1 a.m. or so, I was walking down with my books, going back to the hostel. And some of you went to Ife, people who went to Ife, you can know that there's one place, Love uh, Car Park or something like that, in Aglomos. I saw this particular guy, he was in law, and this particular girl, 
And as I was coming down, I just started hearing, go, 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 go. Ah, ah. Is this the voice of God or where is this coming from? Go, 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 ah, ah. So I looked for, I mean, it was at night. He was, she was in the car with him. He was beating her. So I stood from afar, I was just watching. I mean, I'm telling you the honest truth. I think that's the first time in my life that I saw something like that. The first time in my life. All right. I was just looking. I was, now, I was caught between two, like Paul said, whether to go or to stay. But in my mind, as a street boy, boy that I was, I knew that the man that can beat woman like this, <laughs> if I go, <laughs> the guy will give me Peru here, if you give me Para here, he will just finish me. So I just stayed watching. I mean, there's no FBI, there's no backup plan, there's no call 911. I was just watching. Do you know, he pulled her out, I was watching, was beating her, and, and to be honest, I wanted to, you know, raise alarm, but because it was dark, it was at night, I didn't know maybe he had a knife with him. I didn't even know the kind of person he was. And in some way in my mind, you know, so I walked towards where the security people were, and of course, you know, Anglomos, they were all sleeping. So I was left alone. So I walked away at the end of the day, and in my mind, I was just thinking, what, what had happened there? So I told a few of my friends the next morning, but I couldn't catch the face, but I knew the guy was in law. So I said, okay, the, the, I was going to mention to the, what they call them, the securities and all that. I think I did that the next morning, and I moved on. The next day, now hear this, because I believe that God used that, that thing to show me something for times like this so that we can help people out of it. The next day, I went to um, Health Sciences. How many of you, I mean, there was one jollof rice we used to go and eat at Health Sciences then. I went to the Health Sciences to eat. And lo and behold, I was at the queue and I saw these two people coming in. And as they came in there, they were arguing each other, they were laughing, they were talking, and I looked back. It was the exact same people. Exact same people that were being beaten yesterday night. The guy was laughing with her plane, they were holding themselves. And in my mind, I was thinking to myself, what is going on here? What is going on here? Now, let me tell you, because some people have never been in that situation, and if you have been there, I felicitate with you, I encourage you, and by the power of the anointing of God in this meeting tonight, you are coming out. Because you see, that thing is a stronghold. I know what that thing means. I'd worked in foundation before. I understand what stronghold means. I understand what principality and power means. I understand what, what, what things like um, prostitution. You give them one, one million naira, they are going back there. That's why people who are into drugs, cracks, you give them, they sell their property to smoke that thing. It's a spirit. Principalities of the air. I'm telling you. So I speak under this power and this anointing today. The Bible says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. That bondage of holding you back will pull you out of it in the name of Jesus right now. You know what happened? I looked at that thing. I said, ah, what is going on here? What happened to that lady? Very, very simple and I believe. She probably thought she had no option. Because she had probably invested herself so much in that relationship that she feels like, what will I do next? I mean, you would be so surprised that not only has the guy been beating her, she's probably aborted for him. And this is why some people don't leave relationships. Just because you've aborted for him once and aborted for him twice and you don't think that any other person, because you feel somewhere in your mind, I, I, I believe there is deliverance going on this evening. This was not what I wanted to talk about, but the Holy Spirit has just changed my message entirely. I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to help somebody here tonight. Because you see, there are people who just think that, oh, just because I've aborted for him once or twice, then it means there's a possibility I might not be able to have kids again. And so they want to just live with that guy, even though he's cheating, even though he's beating them, they want to live with him so that at the end of the day, if I don't have kids in the future, then I will say to you, well, I aborted it for you. So they would rather stay there and wait there so that they are not going to somebody else. And it's only because they believe that no other person is good for them. They believe that no other person can marry them. They believe that no other... And so that is one thing you must know, single people. There is no one man for one woman. The best of God is never in your past. Let me say to you again. Even where relationships concern, 
Now, that doesn't mean that you should be stupid with the one that God has given to you and lose it anyhow and say the best of God is not in the past. That's stupidity. The best of God is never in the past. You see, when you encourage yourself in that, even if somebody breaks up with you, the Bible says, if a righteous man falls down seven times, seven times will he rise again. God has a way of always restoring you back. Scripture says, I will restore to you the years the canker one, the caterpillars, has eaten. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, pause, look, and see. I will do a new thing. And so it's very important for you to understand that, that where relationships are concerned, there are certain metrics according to the word of God that is foundation for us. Someone says, oh, I want to marry him because he has good values. Fantastic. Clap for yourself. I love it. But you see, there is a difference between value and spiritual compatibility. Spiritual compatibility is the foundation upon which any value would even stand. That's the truth. So you see people who say, oh, you see, the word of God is very clear on some of these things. You don't need to pray about these things again. It's already in the word. What people are now trying to do, you are trying to get God to change his mind on something he has already said already. God is not going to change his mind on what he has said already. And that's why you must study to show yourself approved. Study the word. Read the word. Read the word. Let me tell you something God told me when I was on campus. Now, this might not apply to you. I was reading the Bible one day. I will never forget. I was in fine touch. It was in the book of Psalms. I can't remember exactly the scripture. I was reading and I was praying about relationship at the time. And I opened a verse, a verse of the Bible that said that you should drink from your own cistern. And when, that, when I read that scripture, the interpretation of that scripture came directly to my heart. I knew exactly what God was saying. That from amongst the people that you are living with, or amongst the friendship and association that have brought you away, therein is your spouse. I knew that. You see, some of these things are not far-fetched. Some of these things are not far-fetched. They are close by to us. I, I mean, God will not, you cannot want to be married now. And God's, your husband is in hungry, or your wife is in hungry. If your wife is in hungry, or is in um, what, what, what's the which other country that is far away, Guatemala. But the wisdom of God, and God wants both of you to get married. He will bring them together to you. And so you have options in Christ. You are not optionless. And this is good for you to know that the foundations of the scriptures already point us to us. Certain things we should not just get involved with. Glory be to God. 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 I've heard someone say, you know, he's a very good man, oh. even though he doesn't really love God, but he lies. But those things will still change. You see, it takes the Holy Spirit to change certain things. There are some things that it takes the Holy Spirit to change. And this is a problem. I know we've heard this a million times. But I want to join the million people that have said it a million times. Ladies and men. Ladies and gentlemen. Please. Never marry somebody with a hope that you are going to change them. When you do that, you are only going to multiply what is already there. Nobody can be changed. There are, let me tell you something. There are certain things that cannot change. It's the Holy Spirit that can change certain things. Someone says that when I marry him, he's going to start attending church. If he has not started going to church while you are dating him, he's not going to go to church with you. Forget about it. If he doesn't honor pastors, if he doesn't honor people that God has sent ahead of you, he doesn't honor your mentors, if he doesn't honor your family, then don't, don't think that one day he's just going to change and all of a sudden he's just going to start honoring everybody. You must be able to see the honorable personality that he is. The Bible says all of these things. It's clear. The indications are there. You see, when we know the word of God, there are so many things we'll stop praying about. I'm telling you the truth. There are so many things. The reason why you have been praying and it's like God hasn't, you know, one of the things I hear the most from people is that I've been praying and God hasn't spoken yet. I tell people this. If you have been praying long enough and God hasn't spoken to your hearing, which is your human spirit, is either of two things. Wait. Or the answer is in the word. Please write it down. If you have been praying about a subject and you have not heard God say anything about it, the answer is either of two things. Wait, be patient, or the 
the answer is in the word go and read it in the word it's there waiting for you so go to the word know the foundations of God's word there and stay there don't be swinging to the side of the pendulum you know see you know you know who you should not be with the word of God says it clearly the word of God says it clearly let me tell you something I've shared this story with you before I knew where God was taking me to and I knew the kind of life that I was going to live when I was on campus I think I've shared it here before but I'll say it again we had this show on campus and it was very big one day we're trying to gather money for the show you know at that time it was plenty money so my, my, my she wasn't my girlfriend there she was still my friend we're just in the same dance group she had she just bought this um, blackberry one purple like blackberry like this I will never forget it and while we were all there you know people were giving people were crazy giving she took the blackberry she removed the what's the name a sim card and sold it as a seed in my mind that thing marked me you see there are certain things that must be valuable to you where relationship is concerned it's not only that she likes to she she can sing and so she can sing love songs when i'm depressed when the voice disappears what will she sing when you are depressed so you see many things that we want is from a selfish point of view very selfish she can sing love songs so but there are certain values that can you can't buy them pity let me tell you something somebody that is akagom you know akagom stitch and see if you preach from now to tomorrow if they are not willing to change they are not willing to change it there are certain values that you must prioritize you must look at because i knew the kind of person i am i can wake up tomorrow morning and say god god says to me give up the house that's the kind of person i am i can wake up tomorrow and god says to me leave leave everything i mean i've done it once i've done it twice i've done it and my wife is used to it i can wake up this morning and say i say babe god told us that we need to sow x x x x and say okay she, she's not going to say hey, oh party what to buy me no way but you are looking for someone that is that can be taking you to cold stone and you cannot pay attention to values cold stone will come and go but don't go and marry somebody that will stone your life they say what they are, they are they are important things to focus on is and now brothers you to take them to cold stone it's not every time kabaraka paragata uh -uh. take them to cold stone at least stone them with ice cream small <laughs> but they are important things and when i saw that image it means that i will not have to convince my wife that i want to sow seeds there are people who, do you know people have had divorce by that alone oh yes oh yes i'm sowing i say i'm not sowing i say we are sowing i say we are not sowing i say we are not sowing i say we are not sowing oh yeah we are not sowing everybody goes separate ways just simple things like that glory be to god the word of god says it do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers the same way you have jackpot compatibility you must have spiritual compatibility because in the days of trouble you must be able to connect at a level together you must be able to hear people that will say to you remember what god told you Re can you remember what god told you can you remember can you remember what god told us it's just for the moment this part of this just journey is like a shining light you must always have people like that in your life those are the people you should pay attention to or let me put it this way you must also pay attention to those people that have those fruits in their lives that can also be nurtured so number one way god speaks to us is through his word what is his word saying concerning your relationship the peculiarity of who you are what is the word saying for you another verse of scripture that we should check in open with me to revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. revelation chapter 1 and verse 3 are we getting blessed today glory be to god revelation 1 and verse 3. it says blessed is he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy 
Blessed is he that read it, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which were written therein, for the time is at hand. Blessed is he that read it. Ask four people around your line, are you a reader of the word? Are you a reader of the word? Blessed is he that read it. Blessed is he that read it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, remember Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Go and read the word of God for yourself. Know the things in the scripture that God has said don't get involved with. Don't be trying to change God's mind where that is concerned, where decisions of relationship is concerned. No. You Listen, you cannot be dating and you are living together. You don't need to pray that God, is it your will for us to live together? It's in the word. You know, so, you know some, sometimes I... I think people overtrust themselves and they overrate themselves. Me, I don't overtrust myself. My trust is in God. I don't overrate myself. Because God will only give you temptation that you can handle. It's the one you can handle. So you see guys and girls really trusting that is it not bad if we just lie and face the wall. Once we can lie and face the wall and put, pull, and put pillow. <laughs> pillow. Pillow. <laughs> Even your hand, you can't control. It's pillow you want to control. Your hand. Look at this generation. People are touching what is not ripe for them to eat. Stop plugging fruits. It's unripe fruits. And when you eat unripe fruits, what happens to your mouth? It gets ah. Glory to God. <laughs> you say pillow. We put pillow. Listen. Pillow. The, the opposite of pillow is pregnancy, you know. <laughs> I'm just joking, but amen. Amen. If that has happened to you, remember there is therefore now no condemnation to them that were in Christ, to them who are in Christ Jesus. All right? What, what, what teaching does is for us to like 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 David said, I, I taught on my ways and I turned and returned. All right. Teachings like this are not for condemnation. No, it's for us to look back and say, oh, okay, this is what I've missed it. And then move back. Standing in your righteousness foundation. Remember, that's the foundation. That's why we started talking about righteousness in the month of January. Glory be to God. But you see, don't tempt yourself. You cannot be dating somebody or be married. And at the same time, you are talking to other people. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not right. So they are setting foundation. They are setting, um, what's that word? Um, jurisdictions or boundaries that you must have <laughs> someone said to me that we will not be we will not be seeing each other where if people are not there now that's one of the ways we're going to keep boundaries you know what I think for those who are in relationship the best way to keep boundaries in my opinion it's not because it's a lie. That one that you are saying you will not come to each other's house is a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Here we go. The, I mean, the same way we say there's cheats. When you are doing fit farm, you cheat. You say, it's the same way. One day they say, ah, for the past one week, we have not touched each other. Like, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Then you go there. Have you noticed it's that week, that day? That's when rain will fall. <laughs> that's when Netflix will release one new movie eh they're everywhere it'll just be cold and the girl will just be you know pity the girl will just be doing like this <laughs> when the guy start pacing around you know something's already burning within him when he start walking fast he's already restless <laughs> glory to God so let me tell you how you keep boundaries you know, I think that one of the best things you can do for your relationship is to have somebody you
you trust that you can be accountable to I'm telling you somebody you trust that you can be accountable to your pastors not your friends no no pardon me I take that back you can trust some of your, your friends but you must be able to show be, be sure that that information would not be used against you on the judgment day of your issues with them but talk to somebody and be open you must be open enough that when it happens you can go back and say it don't happen I don't tell you it don't happen you must be able to go back like that people who can hold you and say you cannot go there for the next three weeks and you are okay you see let me tell you something what you are ashamed about will, come, will eventually make you ashamed I'm telling you there's not, that's nothing to be ashamed about everyone has had these challenges before we are all humans we've all had challenges before but some of the things that we are teaching is so that we cannot continue some, making some of the mistakes. We all look back and say, oh, if I had known better, would have done this better, would have done this better. Everybody have challenges. But there are things you just know and say, ah, this one is a no-go area. It's a no-go area. I mean, there are people who married, I mean, I married my wife as a virgin, but they don't, I mean, some people get condemned by that and say, oh, I'm, remember the foundation. I'm going somewhere by saying that. So the foundation of what we are teaching this season is there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. I don't care how many times you have aborted. I don't care how many times you have slept with somebody. I don't care how many times you are still sleeping. Right now, there is therefore now no condemnation to you. What you ought to do is go back, look back and say, grace has brought me out of this thing and forget it. But what I'm trying to say to you is this, is that when you set certain boundaries, particularly when you have people that you are accountable to, it helps you hold you accountable and say, oh, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let me close with this. How to hear the voice of God when you need to make a decision. Because people who have had Taye, Kende, Bolani, Bolaniwa, you know, and um, Daniel, there's different options. And every option is looking at your attention. And all of them have something. I, I, you know, one of the most interesting things I find is that there's something you will like in A that B doesn't have. But there's something that you like in B that A doesn't have. But the only thing you cannot do is to marry the two of them together. <laughs> so what do you then do at that point? Let me tell you this. And it will help you greatly from a spiritual point of view. On Sunday, I said something to you, and I'm going to use that as a foundation because I only talk about through the word today. When you want to make a decision where marriage is concerned or relationship is concerned, and you are already there, you are emotionally vested, and you must understand that the meaning of marriage is friendship, not chicken and chips or shawarma. Because that's what our generation see. Valentine Day. See, pity. Some people, the only concept of dating is that they want to be getting gifts every February 14. That's the once February 14 come. So that they can also post. Because their friends are posting that somebody gave them gifts. That's the only thing they are thinking in their mind. <clears throat> you will never have a good marriage if you guys are not friends. Same thing with married people. Your friendship is the core of your marriage. It's the core. It's the core that you guys are friend enough. Let me tell you something. One of the ways I can tell a relationship that they are dating that would not work is when I ask them certain questions about both of them and they both can't answer. I would just be laughing in my mind. I know it cannot work. Because you see, people are in a relationship. Of course, you must understand that while you are in a relation, there are phases in which you begin to divulge information. It's not everything. The first day, the first date night, you have already talked about how your mother is the is the witch of the family, and you expect him to to honor your mother. Who wants to honor witch? Ah, he will me. I will not. I will learn from witch now, <laughs> or cast out the witch by the power of the Holy Ghost. So it's not everything. You're just talking. Blah, 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 blah. Settle down first. Just one date is already making you. Ah, ah. You see some girls. Hey, I'm going out on date. Oh, hey, hey. The, the dress they now wear by rushing. The boy doesn't like it. He's now running from you. 
when you go out on the first date learn vocabulary of silence give compliments oh nice shoes oh perceive people it's not ah, if you see this lagos this lagos they are just demons and the brother is already thinking ah. even when you are driving and therefore wants to hit the brother's car you are angry but keep it it's not that the brother is driving and the, you are, the devil will say, say, look at this, ah, ah. If not because I'm in this car, I would have come down and shot this guy. The brother already knows that this one is error. If I marry this one, beat me straight. <laughs> Just first day of dating, going out on drive. Say, you know, when we are going back now, I will be the one to drive. Because I don't allow, no, no, I don't, allow, I don't take nonsense from Lagos driver. The brother is already knowing. And a stupid brother will still continue with the relationship. No, if only one. <laughs> oh, God. So many things to say. We'll continue on Sunday. But let me talk about what I was saying. When it comes to the decision to make, I always advise this. And, I mean, it's scriptural. First and foremost, be friends with a person that you think you would like to date you see what i said be friends with the person that you think you would like to date because when a guy sees a lady or a lady sees a guy you already know in your mind if this one can work or not so be friends with the person first it's not the first time you see the person you say you know god really told me about you four years ago while i was praying under the carpet and i saw a yellow lady just shut up higher. I, I literally can see, and the guy is literally giving accurate words of wisdom. But you know what you are doing? You are scaring that person. And what you are using the gifts of the spirit to do is to intimidate. The gift of the spirit is not to intimidate, it's for edification and comfort. It's not to intimidate people so that they can know that you are spiritual. Christian brothers, stop that thing. Let them perceive by themselves what God said. Look at what the Bible says about Paul. It says, when they perceive the grace upon my life, they extend the right hand of fellowship. You are not the one to tell them that God told me I will marry you. Let them perceive grace. Let them perceive that this is one for me. And let them, did Adam say, you are my wife? And Eve said, no, 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 you are not my wife. She knew by perception. Don't just be going and say, you know, when I got born again, God told me four things about my life. Number one is the wife I'm going to marry. Number two, how many children am I going to born? Number five, what is your problem? If you come to me as the pastor, I will tell you not to marry that boy. Is a, is a, a spiritual lack of covenant sense, boy. You see, you know what Jesus says? Oh, glory to God. He says, in this world, be as wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Learn how to be friends first. What does it mean to be friend? Be friendly. Give compliments. Oh, nice air. Even if you hear it, no fine. Nice. But for your mind, it's no fine. But nice air. You know when you compliment ladies, no? <laughs> oh, you really? Give her one. Give her twice. Give her. And just talk about things. And that's why, Christian brothers, you must know about everything about from Kenny Hagen. Ah! Just, you don't even know Sadio Mani. It, you, th you thought it's Ethiopia that won Nations Cup. You thought it's Ethiopia. Say, ah, this Ethiopia team. Ethiopia, they are very good. Who won Nations Cup? Ethiopia, nah? You don't even know. Basic information in the space. The only person you know is Kenneth Cropland, Crafodola, and Jesse Duplantis. You cannot even have conversation. Just simple conversation. Simple conversations. You can't. You are too spiritual that you don't have social value. No social value. Just high in the spirit. High in the spirit. We have to calm you down with the Holy Ghost. Error, Lua, me. Error. What is the problem? Have conversation. Be friendly. So that, see, go and read things up. Learn things. So that when conversations are going, you must be able to interact back. And ladies, you two be sound. So when he gives you one, you give him two back. And then you people be talking. Once that is there and friendship is there, then go to God in prayer. Now, this is what you do. 
you quiet your emotions hear this very well Luke. you quiet your emotions because you see the moment emotions get involved forget what god has said you are hearing yourself proven over and again the moment emotion entered the thing it's not god again no. it's you because if god is saying yes you are saying no and if god is saying no you are saying yes emotions is so strong you know that so strong and so what you do is quiet your emotion this is why i know that what some people do is they withdraw after they find that they are beginning to like the person sometimes it's okay it doesn't make you look bad to say i, I know i'm we've been talking too much it seems like we have a connection somewhere but i would like to take some step back to review things you can have conversations like that it's old school all this old school of uh, uh, let him just figure out that I want to find out. Let him find out that I'm trying to find out. Or mm -mm. sometimes I have conversations. All right, depending on the kind of brother, or because there are some brother, the conversation will put more pressure. <laughs> but again, you know, and so quiet your heart and take some step back and go to God in prayer. And let me tell you the prayer I'm talking about here: join fasting and prayer, because what fasting does is that it suppresses your will i'm telling you the honest truth fasting suppresses your will take two three days and go to god in prayer reduce the communications reduce it don't just be talking every reduce it then go to god in prayer and begin to pray lord i want to know what you are saying where this matter is concerned there are two things that would happen it's either God tells you, and when it means God tells you, it does not mean that you will hear a voice. Because I never heard a voice saying, Shola, talk by Becky. Is your, if I heard that voice, I will never marry her. Because God had never led me through that before. So when it comes to marriage, people want to be led in a way God has not led them before. You got a job, you applied. You just felt like applying for a job. And you applied for the job. And that was God's will for you. That's the way God has been leading you. All of a sudden, when it comes to marriage, you want God to lead you by him speaking audibly to you. How? That's not how God leads people. God would most likely lead you in the way he has always led you before. Quiet your heart. When you quiet your heart, go to God in prayer and begin to pray. When you are praying, look out for three things. Look out for what the Spirit is saying in your heart. It's either a green light, which means go. The green light you just begin to feel i think i should continue this thing i should pursue this thing further i should and once you start feeling that signal of pursuing it doesn't mean that's the moment you should go and act out ask her out because people have prematurely asked out somebody that they should have dated but the person hadn't developed the will to go out with you yet and you have asked her out and she said no and that craft just everything so the moment you start feeling the goal is not then you should actually ask her out the moment you start feeling the goal what you should do is build the relationship a little bit more. And once you know that the thing has got to a place where you have good foundation, then you can ask her out. And ladies, when they ask you out and you know that he's the one, stop all this old school of, uh, let me go and pray about it. What's your problem? We will find another boy for him, another girl for him. I give you one week. <laughs> Amen. Next Sunday, I'm going to do joining in this church. I'm, I'm going to visit all the new churches. We have about thousands of people. We should be doing wedding last week last year we did lots of wedding i would just say you come you come oh, yeah open them um, songs of praise for them oh yeah dun, 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 dun. Uh -huh. dun. in the name of the father you are both married go now if you people don't take your time <laughs> amen and so when you quiet your heart you receive that instruction from god the next thing you either get the green light or you get the yellow light. The yellow light, according to traffic, means slow down. Take it easy. When it means slow down, let me tell you something. Slow down sometimes doesn't mean cut off. Because that's where some people miss it. Once you hear slow down, you just feel cut off. Sometimes it doesn't mean cut off. Slow down sometimes just means take it easy. Too much information. Calm down. No need for all of Calm down. Slow it down. You are chatting too much. Reduce it. You are talking too much, reduces spot things there. The last thing, because of time that you will hear, is red light. Red light is a no no, which means God is saying, Don't go there. If you like your lifetime, 
and your family lifetime. Don't go there. Oh. People stay on red light and pray over red lights for one year. And people disobey red lights. The moment you are disobeying red lights, you are saying to yourself, I can go the green light because I'm the owner of my own life, not God. The moment you do that, then you are left to yourself to see the fulfilling of the building because it's the word of God that builds the house. It's the knowledge that fuses with all good things. I want to pray for every person under the sound of my voice and every marriage under the sound of my voice. The desire to build the friendship God gave you both. Let that desire be ignited in your heart tonight. In the name of Jesus, let there be fresh wine in your marriages. In the name of Jesus. Listen, as simple as sometimes, go and buy Scrabble, Ludo. Buy it in your house. Play together. Go on date night. Eat together. Just, just create that friendship. You know, talk on the phone. Call each other. Chat. Don't make it official. Don't have an official marriage. You are not in the bank. Hello, hi. Morning, how are you? I'm fine. Have you eaten today in marriage? Oh. That's what we're doing when we're in secondary school. How are you? Have you eaten today? That's the relationship slang. In marriage, have you eaten today? What are you going to eat? Akamu. How many? Four. That's a barrack relationship. Barrack. But from today, you are delivered from every barrack like relationship. And then those who are, who are single, the Lord will help you identify. And for you who are already in a relationship, the Lord will give you the wisdom and the knowledge to fill this house with all good things in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Were you blessed today? All right. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. All right, package your offering quickly. Offerings, let's give, let's give. Wow. Let's package your offerings. All right, you have the account details on the screen. Some people should go back and listen to this message again. All right, the combination of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You have the account details on the screen. Amen. I know what to do. I'm not confused on the choice to make. I know who I should be with. As the Lord leads me, I obey his voice and I trust him. Because everything we do in this kingdom, even when it comes to relationship, is by faith. I'll teach on that on Sunday. All right, you have the account details on the screen. Let's give everyone. We give centrally as a church family. It's so important that we give. We must learn and cultivate the habit of giving and giving and giving to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, if you want to give this other account details, you can take a screenshot and give afterwards, but please ensure that you are giving to the, to the Lord and you are not just watching the service without giving. Let's all practice that. Amen. All right. Dickin Ellie. All right. Who is the person? Dickin. All right. Pastor Dato. Hallelujah. Can we appreciate our pastor? Wow. Can we just put some fire emojis and appreciate our pastor? Let's pray over our seats. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we have given and responded to your love towards us, we thank you today because we receive a blessing and there is a grace that rests upon us from this message. For the single one, there's grace to do. For the married, there's grace to do. For those who are not yet in the time to enter into a relationship, that grace will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We are blessed beyond measure. We walk in abundance. You are able to make all grace to come to us in abundance so that we have in all things, we can have an abundance for every good work in the name of Jesus. Please, let's listen quickly to the following announcements. Um, next week Sunday I'm so excited we are having butterflies we're having a stage production here in Ikeja and um, if you're joining online other the new churches there will be services but of course in Ikeja we're having butterflies if you're here you never experienced uh, the new production before 
become expectant hallelujah it's a gift that god has given us glory to god and this friday by 7 p.m we're having friday night live we're going to be having some beautiful conversations it's called the breakfast edition boboa can complete it online hallelujah glory to god all right, this Sunday by 5 p.m. And Butterflies is 9 a.m. at the Grandeur for those of us in the Kejan. By 5 p.m., there will be a couple's dinner. And um, those that are married, yes, married couples, not intending. Glory to God. Yes, we've ex excluded you, you know. The, by 5 p.m., we'll be having a couple's dinner. We'll be passing a lot more information as we go on. Um, every single morning as uh, so we help to develop a prayer habit by 6 a.m. we pray with Dr. K. Um, I'd like to encourage you to join in. Um, there's a word for your day. There's a way to start your day. You're trying to build a prayer habit or we just want to connect to the grace upon the house. Uh, it's important that we join Dr. K. It's on mixlr.com forward slash um, King's Word Everywhere. You can just look for King's Word Everywhere on the MixLR by 6 a.m. every morning. Um, those going through struggles, you have challenges, issues that you want to solve and you're looking for a community to um, walk with you through the process. Addictions, um, you know, you want a community that can walk you through. There are counselors at the Room 707. You can follow them on Instagram at, at your Room 707. They're doing an amazing work and you can just um, join in. Hallelujah. If you're intending to get married, you've been so stirred up by this message, and you want to make that step, hallelujah, glory to God, um, you can send an email to thehaven at wearethenew.org, and we can walk you through the processes um, for six months before you get married. Um, we want to just walk you through this counsel. Remember, wisdom, the word of God, knowledge is something that you acquire. Understanding is something that you acquire. Hallelujah, glory to God. And of course, please follow us on social media at we are the new ikeja or all the other the new churches and we are the new underscore global that's a global the new um handle hallelujah of course please follow our pastor at uh, on instagram at okodua olushola glory be to god if you were blessed thank you for joining in it's been an amazing tuesday evening it was your first time we love you a link will be placed there um just go to we are the new for does dot org forward slash I love this church. We are the new.org forward slash I love this church. We'd like to reach you, know you, and, and just get to connect with you physically. God bless you and have an amazing, amazing, amazing week. God bless you.